The Forbidden Story of Lilith, the first woman before Eve. Sometimes the name that sounds so sweet in your mouth can be a poison in disguise. Characters from the Bible are used in our everyday life as a lesson or as a name. The beginning of the world recorded in the Bible is a familiar chapter that both Christians and non-Christians know. But with all knowledge of the actors of the Bible, the appearance of a not-so-new character takes people by surprise and makes heads turn in curiosity. As the character becomes popular, people ask, who is Lilith? And why is she so important? Well, we are here to answer these questions for you. Today, we are going to walk through all there is to know about the mystery woman Lilith and her anonymous origin. Don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on those post notifications. Let's get right into the video. Origin of Lilith The name Lilith is said to be derived from the Latin word Lilithu, which is used to refer to female demons or wind spirits. It is said that it resides in desert lands and open spaces in the countryside. It is said that this is dangerous to pregnant women and infants. The earliest surviving mention of the name Lilith appears in a simmering poem, Gilgamesh and the Tree. This is found on the tablet at Ur and is found to be from 2000 BCE. Gilgamesh was a mighty ruler and the first literally hero who defeated monsters and searched desperately for the secret to eternal life. In an episode of this tale, just after the creation of heaven, earth and man by God, Gilgamesh assists the goddess of love and war, Inanna, in her garden, where she tends to a willow tree that she plans to use in making a throne and bed for herself. Her excitement was cut short as the tree became possessed by the tricks of Lilith and two other accomplices, a zoo bird and a dragon. Gilgamesh goes ahead to kill the dragon, which causes the burden to take over in the mountains, and Lilith flees to the desert in fear. At about the same time as the Gilgamesh epic, a terracotta plaque appears in the spotlight. It is referred to as Bernie Relief. Several scholars identify it to be the first known pictorial representation of Lilith, though recently scholars have identified it to be Inanna and not Lilith. The pictorial figure shows a beautiful female, naked with bird wings, chicken-like feet and hair under a cap with several horns. She is seen standing on top of two lions and between two owls. Scholars had claimed that Lilith's connection with the birds was her being able to fly and cause night terrors. This was a very plausible association because in early traditional writings Lilith travels with her wings, a conventional mode of transportation for underworld residents. In the 7th century BCE, limestone was created. It was then discovered in Arslan Tash, Syria, in 1933. This plaque held a very horrific mention of Lilith. It was said that the tablet hanging the house of a pregnant woman, serving as an amulet against Lilith herself. This was because it was believed that Lilith was blocking the light of the inhabitants of the home. The people believed that if Lilith saw her name on the plaque, she would become fearful and depart from the place. This means that the plaque served as protection from Lilith's evil hands on the mother and child. The ancient people thought that at critical junctions in a woman's life, such as childbirth, loss of virginity, menopause, etc., evil forces were at work to cause havoc in their lives. Used as an explanation for the high rate of infant mortality, the people could always reply with it was an evil demon at work. 
Over the years, the Near East became known for its knowledge of the presumed myth Lilith. Is Lilith from the Bible? In the Bible, she is mentioned once. Surprising? Well, not quite. The name Lilith was mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter 34. The book of Isaiah is notable for its record of prophecies of the year 742 to 701 BCE. Through the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah encourages the people of God to avoid every and any form of entanglement with foreign people. Foreign people in the sense those who worshipped other gods, deities. In the set chapter 34, a weapon of vengeance is set out to punish the infidelity of the Edomites and enemies of ancient Israel. The book of Isaiah chapter 34 verse 14 reads, Goat demons shall greet each other. There too the Lilith shall repose and find herself a resting place. It was a bit shocking as it ended there. The Bible is known to speak on newly introduced characters, but for some reason Lilith wasn't introduced. Apparently it seemed that the demon was well known and identifiable by the people in the book and the audience that no explanation of her identity was needed. Although the passage lacks a specific description of Lilith, it does show her location in a desolated area. The Bible verse links Lilith directly to the demonstration from the Gilgamesh epic, who fled to the desert in fear. The wilderness represents mental and physical barrenness, showing her banishment from fertile territory to a barren wasteland. Emphasis on the word barren. Those who translated the book of Isaiah into English had no confidence in their knowledge of Babylonian demonology. Some of the versions of the Bible recorded different version titles of the story. King James's Bible redentions a poem, translating the Lilith to a different name, the Screech Owl, still describing the burden-like features like that of the Babylonian she-demon. The revised standard version, on the other hand, uses only the demon's habits and titles it the Night Hack, debuting the name. Moving on to other texts, the Jewish Publication Society's Holy Scriptures of 1817 refer to this demon as the Demon Monster. The only text that stays true to the name Lilith is the Hebrew text that mentions her name in the Isaiah passage, while others employed other replacements like Old Hack, Bird, etc. Notable, Lilith was not mentioned again in the true text of the Bible but she does appear in the Dead Sea Scrolls found at Qumran. The Qumran sect was known to be deep in demonology, with Lilith appearing in a song for a sage, a hymn used in the act of exorcism. The text is reading, And I, the sage, sound the majesty of his beauty to terrify and confound all the spirits, the demons, Lilith, those that strike suddenly, to lead astray the off-understanding and to make desolate the heart. Centuries after the Dead Sea Scrolls were written, learned rabbis finished the Babylonian Talmud with its final editing from 500 to 1000 CE. What is the Talmud? The Talmud is a name that comes from a Hebrew word that means study and is a compendium of legal discussions. These include tales of great rabbis and meditations on Bible passages. The reference made to Lilith in the Talmud is quite a few, but they show a good view of what intellectuals thought of her. The Talmudic description of Lilith was the descriptions from the Babylonian images, with more references to older known impressions of her. A demon in female form who has had sex with men while they are asleep. A very notable Talmudic reference claimed that people should try not to sleep alone at night, lest Lilith befall them and kill them. In the year 130, between the death of Abel and the birth of Seth, the Talmud records that a distraught Adam separates himself from Eve, 
During that period, he becomes a father of ghosts, male demons and female demons. In another part, it states that those who tried to construct the Tower of Babel were turned into apes, spirits, devils and night demons. The female night demon is known as Lilith. Until the 7th century CE, Lilith was identified as an evil embodiment of dark feminine powers. But in the Middle Ages, the Babylonian she-demon took on new and sinister characteristics. This is the emergence of the alphabet of Ben Sirah, introduced to medieval Jewry. It was a very anonymous text, containing 22 episodes following the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. The first episode features Lilith, who was to serve as a terror for generations to come. The alphabet of Ben Sirah shows the common tale of Lilith, who is evil, knows how to fly and has a flair for sex, but it adds a twist. In this episode, she is Adam's first wife, before Eve, who bodily leaves the Garden of Eden because she feels inferior. Ben Sirah cites the passage Genesis 2 verse 18, indicating that after creating Adam, God realizes it is not good for man to be alone. But in this version, God creates another person, a female called Lilith. In no time, the couple starts to have disagreements and neither of them settles their fights. Lilith refuses to lie under her husband during the internode, while her husband insists that it is the rightful place for her to be. Lilith believed that we are equal because we are both created from the earth. The struggles continued until Lilith becomes frustrated with the stubbornness Adam exhibits. She then calls the sacred name of Yahweh, a tetragrammaton version. It was a sin to utter such sacred syllables. And with this, Lilith flees after gaining power from pronouncing God's name in such a way. Unlike the other stories here, Lilith flees to the Red Sea, a site of historic and symbolic importance to Jewish people, gaining independence from her husband Adam. The Almighty then tells Adam that if Lilith fails to return, 100 of her offsprings must die each passing day. Three angels were then sent to search for her. They found her at the Red Sea and she refused to go with them, claiming that her purpose was to devour children. To prevent her from being drowned, she swears in the name of God that she will not harm any infant who possesses an amulet with her name. But why had the author theorized that Adam had a male before Eve? It is found that in the book of Genesis, God created man and woman on the sixth day, but in Genesis 2.30, the Lord casts a deep sleep on Adam and forms a woman from Adam's ribs, thus showing that God created women twice, once with men and once from men's ribs. As the one recorded to be formed from the ribs is Eve, there has to be the first woman that completes the story, which is Lilith. Featuring other stories of Bible relations, the tale of Lilith shows her head in various contexts. She is reborn in each character she is interpreted as. Analysis shows that each depiction of Lilith represents each generation's view of the feminine role. Was Lilith truly the first woman before Eve, as it was recorded in the true texts of the Bible, or was she just a demon to be feared? Well, that is all for today's video. Thanks for watching. Until next time.